Hello, and welcome to Context Free, where we talk about programming languages. Today, I'm excited to have Tolls Henlickson on the show, where I'm going to be interviewing him about the programming language FUTHARC, of which he is the lead. FUTHARC is a data parallel functional programming language, and it has over a thousand stars here on GitHub. You can also visit Troels's uh, personal website at sigkill.dk. And here's the FUTHARC website. Why FUTHARC? Because it's nicer than writing CUDA or OpenCL by hand. CUDA is a technology from NVIDIA, and OpenCL is a technology from the standards body that also creates OpenGL and Vulkan. These are technologies that allow you to write compute operations for programs that do uh, parallel compute on GPUs. And if we go look in the FUTHARC documentation, we find a simple example here to calculate the dot product of two arrays of 32-bit integers. Dot product is just the sum of the element-wise product of the members of the arrays. So we map these arrays through the product operation or function, and then we reduce them, uh, the, the products, through uh, the sum function, starting with value zero. If we come over here, I've got this ready as a program to try out in FUTHARC. We have, instead of X and Y, I called it things one and things two, so that we'll be able to search for it more easily in the output code. So I say foothark c uh, dot prod dot foot. It generates the C program for me, and then I can search for things one and things two. So as we see here this uh, single loop that it created uh, from what had been a higher order function operations over here in the original source. Here we see a product of our elements, and then we see the sum of things starting from zero, just as we expected. And we can also take a look at uh, what happens when we try to use this program and see if it does what we expect it to. So if we go and run this uh, example here from the documentation, we do see the dot product of 2 times 4 plus 2 times 5 plus 3 times 6 is indeed 36 as expected. We can also compile this to OpenCL. I have OpenCL handy and not CUDA at the moment. We come over here and search and we find this things one and things two inside of this string. This is an OpenCL program that will be sent through the OpenCL driver and converted to machine code for running on your GPU. Now moving on to the actual interview with Troels. This was an asynchronous interview. I sent him questions, he sent me answers, and then I've edited it together. Anyway, I'm very excited to share what he had to say with y'all. Here we go. To start off with, how do you pronounce your name? How should I pronounce it in American English? Well, the Danish pronunciation is Trolls, but Troels seems to fit English speakers better. But in the end, Trolls is what it usually ends up as. How did FUTHARC get started? How is Project Teamwork organized today? Okay, so Kospin Wancha at the University of Copenhagen had some loose ideas for how to optimize parallel functional programs, and he asked around for students who would be interested in helping out. I was the only student who stuck around, and it eventually became both my master's and PhD thesis. Development happens openly on GitHub nowadays, and I try to keep design decisions open. But of course, our small team at the university also discusses the design in person. Why FUTHARC says, because it's nicer than writing CUDA or OpenCL by hand. Have you tried to test or quantify this? Okay, so we've ported dozens of programs from CUDA and OpenCL to FUTHARC, and they all become much shorter and to the point because you don't have to mess around with low-level optimizations or directly with memory or anything like that. They also sometimes become faster, which is a nice surprise, but it wasn't really what we expected. Beyond C or C++, how does FUTHARC compare, for example, with writing CUDA kernels in Python via Numba? I don't know Numba in depth, but it's a fairly thin layer on top of CUDA, isn't it? So you still have to know the GPU execution model, you just get to write it in Python instead of C++. Uh, FUTHARC shields you from all of that. It's not really a GPU language, it's a high-level, portable, parallel programming language, and the compiler takes care of all GPU details for you. Is there any possible future where FUTHARC becomes a general-purpose programming language? Well, I hope not. Uh, there already are lots of great general-purpose functional languages. Uh, I like Haskell and StandardML myself. FUTHARC works well because it's so specialized and small. That makes the compiler's job easier, so you get fast code but it also makes the language quite easy to learn. FUTHARC is a pure functional language. Has this been the right decision? Could there be any benefit in allowing impure sections of code? Yes, FUTHARC is pure. This has definitely been the right decision. If you want parallelism, you definitely need some kind of control over effects, and purity gives you absolute control because there will be no effects. With respect to FUTHARC, one of its most unusual features is a uniqueness type system that allows you to perform efficient in-place updates of array elements without violating purity. This was quite painful to design and implement, but it has proven quite crucial for some programs. 
I haven't missed impurity otherwise, except for print statements for debugging. How hard was it to work out higher order functions in FoodArc? Well, that was pretty easy because I just gave the problem to a very bright student as his master thesis. Uh, more seriously, our technique is defunctionalization, which is from the 70s. And the main challenge was in coming up with language restrictions that would be simple to understand, yet avoid the usual problems with defunctionalization, mostly that the generated code has too many branches. Uh, I think we solved that pretty well by restricting where you can put first class functions, like you can't put them in arrays, you can't return them from, from if expressions. And that means that the defunctionalization transformation can generate code that is completely free of extra branches. Whether deep learning or otherwise, does GPGPU have an immediate feature outside NVIDIA? Do you see much interest in OpenCL? Well, a surprising number of supercomputers are actually built with AMT GPUs. I'm not quite sure why, given the stranglehold NVIDIA has on mainstream GPGPU software. AMD has good hardware. I have a Vega 64 myself in my desktop computer, so I certainly hope the competition will continue. Uh, with OpenShell, I'm not so sure. Apple is abandoning it. NVIDIA never liked it much. AMD, I don't really know where they're going with the software stack. It seems quite a mess. Of course, from the FUDAC perspective, we don't really care much. We can always just write a code generator for whatever low-level API ends up winning. We already have a fully operational CUDA backend, and at one point a student wrote a prototype of a Vulkan backend, so FUDAC can probably handle whatever. Is FUDAC usable for writing graphics, shaders, and games? Well, that's an interesting question, and I don't really know the answer, mostly because I don't know that much about game development. Now, Fuzak doesn't have an OpenGL backend, but such a thing could always be written. But a perhaps more serious problem is that Fuzak is not truly a GPU language. There's no way to directly talk about things like textures, which I think are quite important for shaders. However, Fuzak is probably a decent choice for writing non-graphics parts of games like physics engines. Where is Fuzak going in the future? How committed are you to backward compatibility at this point? When does 1.0 come out and how do you decide the scope? So I am moderately committed to backwards compatibility, but we have some big changes coming up, in particular a new type system that is likely to break a lot of code. By the time 1.0 comes out, I want to be able to make some kind of compatibility promise, and I think we are close. Essentially, I think 1.0 will come out when I feel that the language is complete and the remaining work is mostly on the compiler itself. What's your favorite FUDARC user success story? Well, all of them. I have a particular fondness for the people who've uploaded Python libraries to the Python package index that use PyOpenShell modules generated by the Futhark compiler. That's pretty cool, and it's what I hoped would happen when we wrote the Python backend in the first place. What other question or questions should I have asked you? You should have asked, what are Futhark's criteria for success? It's an interesting question, because Futhark is such a specialized language that even in the very best case, it still won't be used that much in numerical terms. My ambition is that when all is said and done, Fuzak will be remembered as faster than everything that is more flexible and more flexible than everything that is faster. I'm also quite motivated by uh, the example set by Stalin Scheme, which is a scheme implementation that I'm not sure was ever used much, but it was widely renowned for generating very fast code, even if it wasn't practical. At one point, that was kind of the ambition I had for Fuzak. I didn't really expect anyone to use it, but it could at least establish a reputation for itself. Now I, my ambitions have grown, and I think there is actually a chance that people will be able to use Fuda again and do some good work with it. And that's it. I'm super happy that Charles could join me on the show today, and I enjoyed learning so much about FoodArc. I hope it has a great future ahead of it, and hope I can do more interviews in the future as well. Bye, y'all.